Hello and welcome to the talk with Tariro. On the program today, we are looking at um, one issue which has uh, become a challenge. When it used to be positive talk, we went to Mavuku, went to quite a number of high-density suburbs to tackle the issue of uh, drug abuse. And um, now it's actually becoming too, too prevalent in Zimbabwe with some people even being admitted, some people even losing lives. And when we're talking about drug abuse, it also is accompanied by even alcohol abuse. And when we're talking about alcohol abuse, it's not even proper alcohol. We are talking about illicit brews that are rampant on the black market. So that's one issue that we want to look at. And today we would want it to, to, to look at it from a technical uh, point of view, really having a medical practitioner unpacking that issue for us. We need to understand as a nation how serious uh, this challenge is. And uh, we have uh, Dr. Sacrifice Madenika Chirisha, Chirisa. He is uh, a specialist psychiatrist. Uh, Dr. Chirisa, welcome to the talk. Thank you, sir. I want to hear from you. You deal with um, issues of drug, alcohol abuse. Uh, you deal with issues of psychiatry. How prevalent are they just generally in our country? It has become uh, very prevalent. Uh, if you look at the admissions at uh, central hospitals, that is your Parenyatwa and Arara hospitals, mm -hmm. uh, studies showed that 60% of psychiatric admissions are as a result of uh, substance use disorders mm -hmm. or the use of substances. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, what we have also seen is that globally, uh, when you talk about alcohol, alcohol abuse mm -hmm. is rampant in 10% of the population or 10% of the people that drink. And, um, and when it comes to other drugs, mm -hmm. the percentages are lower. Uh, but, uh, but what we are seeing is that um, a lot of young guys, are now using it and um, it causes serious, serious problems. Mm -hmm. And most of our admissions that we're dealing with these days mm -hmm. are as a result of substance induced psychosis or substance linked mm -hmm. uh, psychotic or psychiatric disorders. So what would you attribute this increase, especially when you're looking at, uh, at Zimbabwe? All right. Uh, when you're talking about increase in substance use disorders, mm -hmm. the the causes are myriad. Mm -hmm. um, it has to do, n number one, with somebody's personality. You can start with it at individual levels. Somebody's personality. Uh, it has to do with the environment. Uh, you know, a place where drug abuse is rampant. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easier for somebody to in then indulge. Mm -hmm. um, it also has to do with other uh, conditions, other psychiatric conditions. We have seen a lot of uh, substance abuse. Uh, in people with, uh, for example, depression mm -hmm. or psychosis or any uh, psychological disorder. Uh, and then they, they start what we call self-medicate. Mm -hmm. um, so what we have seen is that nobody starts um, using drugs and wants to become an addict or uh -huh. to have problems. Mm -hmm. uh, it can come as, as a result of peer pressure. Uh, it can come uh, as a result of a family, when mm -hmm. the family is using drugs, yes. when they are the father, the mother are drinking, or it's easier. In fact, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we have seen is that um, the biggest predictor of, 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 of somebody using alcohol mm -hmm. is family use mm -hmm. by parents. Yes. It's, it's one of the biggest predictors. So if there's somebody, if it's acceptable within that family, mm. uh, you know, um, you're, you're going to see that uh, substance abuse is, 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 is more rife mm -hmm. there. But obviously, um, we cannot argue from yeah. the, the extremes. Mm. Uh, it's an interplay of multiple uh, mm. uh, uh, causes. Yes. For example, boredom, yeah. uh, unemployment can also add into that, especially in our mm. environment, mm. where most of our youth are not finding anything uh, meaningful to do mm. and are bored and they've got nothing to do. Uh, where play areas have been converted into stands and mm. there are no mm. recreation areas within the new sprouting suburbs. Yes. So you've got this group with a lot of energy and with nowhere to release it. Mm -hmm. What's worrying for me, doctor, really, is when you go into these communities, mm -hmm. people are actually even talking about the use of hard drugs. Mm -hmm. And when I'm talking about the use of hard drugs, people are talking about young, young, young boys, young girls are being exposed to drugs like cocaine. 
heroin in Zimbabwe. Things that we used to hear, it happens in Brazil, in far off places. But now you hear that that is prevalent here in Zimbabwe. It's so prevalent here. Uh, one of the things that we've actually seen uh, in us admitting patients is that, uh, for example, crystal meth mm -hmm. is, is being used uh, by the uh, Makorokozas, the artisan miners, mm -hmm. to keep them awake while they work. And uh, so there's a lot of abuse in that space and people that want to uh, party all night uh, and, and not sleep and not knock, if mm -hmm. I should say. Mm -hmm. and they also then use it to, st to try to keep themselves awake. And it's available. Mm -hmm. uh, it's available in every location. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, these drugs are available everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, they're available at colleges. They're available in every neighborhood, whether rich, poor, middle mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. Somebody in that neighborhood is a drug peddler. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so it's very worrying. It's very worrying. Uh, but what, what, what we are seeing is that drugs are available as air mm -hmm. almost anywhere within a walking distance, you can find somebody who's selling drugs. How, how did we get to that where they are now quite available? Something that we never used to. Where are we missing the link? Where are we losing it? There are multiple uh, causes of, of that. Obviously, uh, there's a culture. There's the hip-hop culture, mm. which we have celebrated. And if you look at that, uh, it celebrates the use of drugs. Mm. Uh, the videos, people are using drugs. Mm. Uh, the movies that you are watching, people are using drugs. Mm. So out of curiosity, uh, especially the adolescents would want to try yeah. because at that stage, it's a stage of experimentation. Mm -hmm. People want to experiment, yeah. people want to see, and uh, they end up losing it. Two, uh, we, 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 we need greater funding yeah. uh, to, to curb, especially the illicit mm -hmm. inflows of, mm -hmm. of, of, of drugs. We now know that Southern Africa is a gateway of, 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 of drugs mm. to the rest of Africa. Yes. So we need uh, funding for the appropriate uh, government departments that they have to deal with, uh, you know, tailing and uh, locking down uh, such um, activities. Mm -hmm. But it's not there at the moment. Yeah. So uh, our borders are lax. Mm. So things come in, things move out. And um, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. Well, we continue with Dr. Chirisa after the break. This should be quite sobering to you, our viewers, as parents whilst watching. Yes, it is a reality. Our children are being exposed to those hard drugs that we used to see in movies. The situation is dire in Zimbabwe. Join us after the break. Welcome back. We continue with our program today where we have a specialist psychiatrist, that's uh, Dr. Uh, Chirisa, unpacking the issue of, uh, of drugs. He talked about um, prevalence of uh, the use of crystal meth, prevalence of the use of um, heroin, cocaine in Zimbabwe. Then we have things as simple as uh, cough syrup. We know bronchial is being abused. What I want, doctor, for you is to enlighten Zimbabweans. What happens to me as an individual once I start abusing drugs? How does it affect me to the point where then you would need to admit me? Um, uh, psych psychiat I become a psychiatric patient. We want people to be enlightened. Um, let me also just correct you, Terry. Yes. The, the, uh, the cough mixture abuse mm. is not that simple. It uh -huh. is actually very complicated mm -hmm. and um, I would just want probably to explain yes. and say that uh, you are sub when you are given a cough mixture you're supposed to take uh, f five meals or ten meals three times a day mm -hmm. and if you take two bottles in one single day it's an overdose mm -hmm. and there are substances in there that are psychoactive that are supposed to control uh, and, 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 and you know especially the codeine mm -hmm. but that codeine in your body it is then changed into a weak morphine so you actually mm. are like similar to somebody who is taking morphine, you know, because you are taking it at high dose, and when it is converted in your body, you are just like somebody who has taken morphine. So it's really a, a difficult uh, drug uh, 
to use. The sticking mm. that you see mm -hmm. is as a result yes. of the histamine. What will uh, be happening there? Because you often hear young people saying, I've a sticker. Yes. What exactly will be happening? The, there's another component in there, uh, which uh, mainly the histamine that are used within cough mixtures mm -hmm. to decrease the irritation when somebody has got a, is coughing. Mm -hmm. But at high dose, they, they cause uh, uh, retardation of mental uh, uh, faculties. So you become just as if you are stuck until your body deals with that and it wears out on itself. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it becomes a way of a cheap high. You are high the whole day after using just a uh, few dollars. Um, now with the, with with the red it's slightly more but mm. but you could just drink a few a few versus drinking beer so we have we we now have got people that are not even drinking beer and are just drinking uh, 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 the cough mixtures mm. the broncli especially uh the the and and sometimes even the histalix histalix mm -hmm. d any cough mixture with with those substances will cause at high dose mm -hmm. so it's very complicated and will even cause withdrawals when you start uh, when when you when you stop now mm. coming to your question mm. what then happens yes what happens with drugs is this drugs they hijack what i call your pleasure center your brain mm. has got a center called the pleasure center mm -hmm. uh, this is the the center when you watch a good movie you enjoy when you drink uh something which is nice when you eat ice cream uh when you do anything which is pleasurable mm. that pleasure center is the one that is lightened up and it releases a hormone uh, in fact a neurotransmitter mm. called um, dopamine that is also called the, the the pleasure neurotransmitter and when that happens you then have got a behavior to continue to seek for things that give you pleasure mm -hmm. so what drugs do all the drugs they hijack that center so you don't feel pleasure anymore mm -hmm. from natural pleasurable things uh, being with your family, mm -hmm. eating uh, chocolate, uh, watching TV, mm. it does not bring you to the level of pleasure uh -huh. that you are used to. So your brain now goes to sick, and so it hijacks, and all you're thinking of is that drug. That's when somebody now becomes an addict. So they'll start to steal, they'll start to sell whatever they have, they'll sell their shoes, mm. sell their fo cell phone, they'll steal from the neighbors, they'll steal from their own parents, they'll destroy their own lives only to get the drug because that it is what is called the internal motivating mm -hmm. center of a human mm -hmm. so you are motivated to do things that give you pleasure mm -hmm. and when the drug gets hold of that you are hooked and you cannot uh, uh, set yourself free mm -hmm. and my system uh, my internal organs uh, Look, what happened because these are drugs and mm -hmm. they are chemicals yes. they do have uh, chemical things that they will do for example excessive alcohol will mm -hmm. cause ulcers will yes. cause uh, will damage your liver liver cirrhosis will cause heart damage alcoholic uh, cardiomyopathy which will cause heart attacks mm. heart problems uh, when you've got um, uh, the 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 uh, the cocaine it says these things are like stimulants mm. they'll stimulate your heart you can have heart attacks heart arrhythmias. so it causes a whole lot of problems from yeah. head mm. to toe mm. it would really become a medical lecture if we go uh, system by system yes. but what we have seen that these are these are drugs which are at above recommended levels mm -hmm. if they are prescription drugs mm -hmm. or are not even allowed to be used in human beings mm -hmm. they have problems and one of the things that they will do because of the excessive firing that they cause on the neuro uh, on the neurons in the brain mm -hmm. those neurons will will work excessively and some of them will die and this is what happens is that you then find somebody even after they stop using the drug mm -hmm. they never fully recover because some of the neurons mm. have, be, have been squeezed and caused to fire and perform above what is expected mm -hmm. and they die. Mm -hmm. So somebody then becomes a cabbage even without the drugs. Mm -hmm. So it's very dangerous. Mm. And then psychiatry, mm -hmm. where then somebody is said to be men mentally challenged now, okay. mental in illness crops in. Um, we see quite a number of, uh, a big percentage of people that use drugs end up presenting with psychiatric illnesses. Uh, some of them can range from, um, from simple anxiety disorders uh, to range to depression. Uh, we've seen people committing suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually had a friend of mine when I was at school who died with an overdose. We're not quite sure whether it was an overdose mm -hmm. or it was suicide, but I even have one who shot himself with a shotgun. 
we then have people that actually present with violence, mm -hmm. uh, with uncontrolled behavior. Some people will then un unearth some things that were covered. For example, uh, some form of epilepsy can, mm. can start to come as a result of the falls and, and, the, and the trauma. You will have some brain damage. Mm. You can actually have psychosis where actually somebody loses touch with reality mm. and they'll start to speak gibberish or uh, confusion, hit people, uh, break, break cars, mm. violence. Mm. So it's a whole oh, mess. Yes. And it can start from just simple uh, anxiety to, 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 to extreme violence. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and even taking oneself, suppose your judgment is lost, mm -hmm. uh, your ability to control yourself inhibition mm -hmm. is lost mm -hmm. and um, and you you just become a nonsense to the whole society mm -hmm. we'll continue after the break with dr Cherisa. Welcome back as we continue with our discussion. Um, Doc, what really attracted us to invite you to our program yes, sir. is uh, the centers that you have set up. Because um, after we aired uh, our previous episodes where young people were confessing to be using drugs, yes. a lot of parents call us mm -hmm. and say, where do I take my child? Yes, this is a challenge that is there. I'm watching this program. I have a child within the home. I even had somebody who was phoning to say, my son beats me and my husband. Sure. He's breaking everything, what we're talking about before going for the break. So what, what do parents, where, where do we take our kids? Where do we take our relatives once they are hooked? Okay. Um, like I said, when, the journey to addiction is, is a journey. Yes. You don't just use drug once and you become addicted. Mm. So there are interventions that are, are consummate with the level of progression. Yes. So in the early, when you see that somebody is starting or they are now starting to abuse or you can see early signs, all they need are what we call short interventions mm -hmm. where you uh, psychotherapy, uh, where you just uh, uh, educate them. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 you tell them that you know. And, 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 and most parents do not want to come mm -hmm. uh, out and they are scared to bring their children yes. for, for counseling. So the first thing that we normally do is counseling, psychotherapy, motivational uh, interviewing, mm -hmm. where we just look and say, listen, if you continue, this is what is going to happen. Because some of the key, some of the kids or the adolescents will not know the consequences. Yes. They are not really aware mm -hmm. of those consequences. Yes. One of the things that I've actually done is when I get some young guys who are starting to use drugs and they're not yet addicted, I just bring them for a walkthrough mm -hmm. and then they see yeah. the end mm. and after that 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 in itself can be therapeutic can yeah. stop mm. that thing in its tracks mm -hmm. then we go to the next people that are having problems but are not yet addicted mm -hmm. those ones will need some some form of uh, group therapy they'll need some form of detoxification mm -hmm. they'll need a bit of psychotherapy mm -hmm. then we've got the hardcore that are now addicted yes. those mm -hmm. ones will need full rehabilitation uh, so at that point, you cannot just go to that person who's addicted and say, stop, please stop. They mm. cannot stop. Yeah. At that point, it's a brain disease. Yes. Uh, it's, they are not doing it because they want to hurt you. They are not doing it because uh, they, they, most of them actually want to stop. Mm. But their body drives them and the, the withdrawals actually forces them. Uh, to actually go and get because mm. they can no longer function. Yeah. So those ones, they need to be rehabilitated in a tertiary institutions like the ones that we, uh, we, we, we've got. Mm -hmm. We opened the first drug uh, rehabilitation unit in 2015. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have since grown. We opened another one two years ago. In, uh, in, that first one was in Highlands. Mm -hmm. Second one was in Borodo. Mm -hmm. And currently we are actually building the third one. We should uh, come uh, on into operation mm -hmm. in, in mid this year. Mm -hmm. uh, but those, that's for the private sector. Yes. In the government sector, mm -hmm. we do still uh, do that at the um, government uh, psychiatric units, mm -hmm. uh, even so, we are, w w even though they are n not fully equipped, but half a loaf is better, better than, than mm -hmm. nothing. So, if you've got your child, if you've got a relative uh, that really needs help, please approach us. The problem is most people 
even if they see that their relative, their son, their daughter is not mm. a problem, mm. they don't want to approach psychiatrists. Yeah. They still stigma with psychiatry. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that I wanted to yes. talk about. It, lots of stigma attached to psychiatry. True. And usually we put witchcraft. Oh, yes. 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 So, so there's, there's, there's uh, Mamepo. Yes. And, 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 and the thing is that whether you are a traditionalist mm -hmm. or a Christian, yes. how you explain mental illness in our African context is the same. Yeah. In Christianity, it's demons. Mm -hmm. In our traditional, it's Mamepo, somebody is is blowing or is is argo to mira mm. from from uh, uh, w w whatever yes. you know but what i want to say is in in medicine this is a mental disorder it can be treated mm -hmm. and the earlier we seek treatment before the damage has been done the better mm -hmm. instead of us to wait 20 years us to wait 30 years, then try to bring that person, mm -hmm. it might be too late. Mm -hmm. So the moment we see it, I'm aging parents, yes. let's not stop, let's take action right there. Mm -hmm. You are really saving your child. It's mm -hmm. like somebody who's drowning in, in, uh, in the pool. Yes. Then you say, ah, let's leave him. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll start to swim. He's not going to start to swim. This person is sinking. Mm -hmm. We need to jump in, rescue him. And sometimes people might not even know that they need help. Mm -hmm. But you are there as relatives, as family, as a wife, or as... Um, as a husband to help your relative. Mm -hmm. it is how, 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 how do you deal with issues of confidentiality? Because that's one worry that we had a lot of young people who are actually addicts saying, mm -hmm. no, I don't want to go to that center, so and so will see me, all that kind of thing. The unfortunate thing is that we've got very few centers. Yes. Uh, and most of them are concentrated mainly in Harare. Mm. Um, so what we need to do in order to solve that, we're going to need Every city, every town yes. needs its own center. Mm -hmm. It's something that you are working towards too. Uh, you know, the Ministry of, mm -hmm. of Health is working towards that, yes. but it needs a lot of funding. Mm -hmm. But one thing, when you are being seen in these centers, you are being seen by medical experts, and we are trained yes. to maintain our confidentiality. Mm -hmm. Just like we have maintained confidentiality when it comes to HIV status yes. or to disease status, we continue to do the same. Mm -hmm. So all our efforts, we are trained to keep secrets. Mm -hmm. If we would speak all the things that we know, <laughs> H-Metro would not be enough. <laughs> it would be too little for the things that we know. Mm -hmm. But because we are professionals, we are able to hold and, 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 and so, so we treat all, uh, all patients as equal. Mm -hmm. uh, we, and, and we respect the patient's charter, uh, which is a document written by the Minister of, of Health, how patients need to be treated. Mm -hmm. And in all those centers, that's something that we put forward. And for those who would want to reach you, how do they get, get in touch with you? They can uh, search uh, for us mm -hmm. on, uh, on, on Facebook or social media, mm -hmm. uh, Highlands Half Your House mm -hmm. or Borodor Half Your House, mm -hmm. and soon to come Mandara Half Your House. Okay. Uh, that's for the private. Mm -hmm. But I also want to say that the government still offers mm -hmm. Annex and Harare Hospital in Gucheni, Ngomahuru, they offer decent uh, rehab for those who cannot afford private. Mm -hmm. yes. So really you had those centers, that's Annex, Ngomahuru, all those centers as young people. You need to ask yourself, do you want to be admitted in those centers? And you heard even some of the challenges that you would face from Dr. Chirisa. Drug abuse is a problem. It is a challenge that we have. It is time we do not or you do not make yourself get hooked. Until next week, it's goodbye.